The moon is riddled with micrometeorites as fast as bullets and hit by quakes that last for hours. Temperatures can climb past 250 degrees during the day, but plunge below minus 200 degrees at night. A leakage in any base could mean disaster. So why build on the moon? In the past, we heard about space exploration and colonization. It was always an issue of if, not when. But now that space projects are happening left, right, and center, it's time to take this seriously. Especially now with NASA's Artemis mission in place which will lead the first woman and next man on the moon by 2024. Not only that, but China and Russia recently announced that they will be cooperating to build a moon base before 2031. The deadline might be overly ambitious, but China seems confident and Russia too has expressed a similar sentiment. The European Space Agency is also keen on building a moon base, having said in the past that the far side of the moon would be an excellent place for it. The head of the ESA has said that we should treat the moon as a stepping stone for experiments before bringing humans to Mars. It has been proposed that a Mars base would be built using a giant 3D printer, but why not test this technology on the moon beforehand? If something were to go wrong, it's only a four-day trip to the moon, rather than at least six months to Mars. The Artemis mission will take astronauts to the south pole of the moon, where its equatorial location places it in both extreme light and darkness as well as having frozen water that could fuel the lunar base. The site must also have near continuous sunlight to power the base, as well as having easy access to areas that hold ice. The location is key to how successful this mission will be. Scientists have discovered that at higher elevations, such as on crater rims, astronauts would see much longer periods of light. However, at the bottom of some of these craters, they are in constant darkness. This is due to the sunlight at the south pole of the moon striking at such a low angle. Some of the coldest craters can dip to about minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 235 degrees Celsius. On the surface of the Artemis mission, core elements for a sustainable stay include suitable mobility that would allow lunar explorers more freedom to conduct scientific work. This includes having a lunar vehicle that would be able to transport the crew around the landing zone while also having the ability to drive in and out of some craters that may be inaccessible on foot. It's great that all these missions are taking place, but why should we build on the moon anyways? Building a moon base would allow us to gather an immense amount of research on the moon itself. It would allow astronauts to do a lot more experiments if they are set up for sustainability there, rather than a mission that would only last a few days. Another key concern is how little we know about deep space radiation. It will be crucial for astronauts, especially for Mars, that we know how to properly protect against these harmful rays. It's difficult to study radiation from the Sun on Earth as our atmosphere helps protect us against it. The radiation astronauts would receive on the Moon would be a lot different than on Earth because the Moon's atmosphere is so thin. A Moon base would help us study this radiation immensely while providing the data for scientists to come up with a solution to protect against it. As we are looking to the future of long-distance space travel, it's important that our astronauts be properly prepared. Of course, there will always be some unknowns when venturing into uncharted territory. However, building a moon base would provide us with valuable data before sending people on longer missions back through deep outer space, where there is no atmosphere for protection against radiation hazards. Building a moon base could serve as something similar to a pit stop for space travel. Rockets launched from the Moon require significantly less fuel compared to Earth due to the Moon's lower gravitational force. It could also be possible to send material to the likes of Mars such as 3D printed material for radiation shielding, among other uses. Another benefit would be building observatory facilities on the Moon from lunar materials. The lunar soil can be mixed with carbon nanotubes and epoxies in order to make telescope mirrors. This will help reduce costs and make it more sustainable. Not only that, but the darkness and cool temperatures of certain areas of the moon would be perfect for infrared cameras for the telescopes. Radio telescopes could also be utilized here as the moon offers a radio-free environment. Here we can collect data without interference from any external sources in order to study space phenomena such as pulsars and galaxies with great precision. However, to do any of these things we need to overcome a variety of complications when it comes to a moon base. One of which is that although we know the moon contains water and other important elements like carbon and nitrogen, we need a method to actually locate and gather these resources. Due to the extreme cold temperatures, these resources are likely found in small ice crystals that hold the water. 
If no means is found to gather these resources, they would likely need to be imported. Not only that, but there would also need to be a way for it to be recycled, which is a whole problem in and itself. The moon dust is formed by micrometeorites over billions of years and due to the lack of weathering on the moon, it is extremely abrasive and unrounded. Because of this, it sticks to everything and can damage space equipment and it may also be toxic to humans. This is likely because the dust is charged by particles from solar wind and further amplified by the thin atmosphere. In order for a moon base to be sustainable, it will also need a source of food for the astronaut. Unfortunately, there are many obstacles to overcome when it comes to growing food on the moon. Just some of the difficulties include the exposure to solar flares, which would expose the crops to high levels of radiation, and that the soil holds little to no nitrogen and potassium, and also lacks insects for pollination. Also, the long lunar night lasts 354 hours too, which makes it very dark for a long period of time, and certain areas are exposed to extreme temperature variation because of this. Plants would likely need to be grown in sealed chambers, but would be susceptible to far lower pressure than on Earth. However, experiments have shown that some plants can thrive at these lower pressures. Of course, this is a topic scientists have been debating for quite some time, and many have proposed the idea of using artificial light to compensate for the lunar nights. Unfortunately, this would be very expensive to run in terms of electricity. Another proposal was to use minimal artificial lights to maintain the plants during the long, dark and cold lunar nights, along with using fast-growing crops that will likely start as seedlings with artificial light and be harvestable by the end of the day. It seems that any solution for growing crops here is a greatly difficult task, but so is getting to the moon in the first place. These artificial lights, tools and many other things on the moon require electricity. So where will this energy come from? One possible solution to the problem is to split water on the moon into hydrogen and oxygen, and then recombine it to create electricity. There is a lot of solar energy during the day which could power this technology. Another viable solution would be to reflect sunlight into a certain area using a lens to generate heat which could also be converted into energy. Exploration and colonization is something humans have done for years, and the next step is in space. There are a lot of tasks to overcome before this can be achieved, but with the likes of China, Russia, the ESA, and NASA's Artemis mission, colonizing the moon isn't just something out of a sci-fi novel anymore. It is soon to be a reality. Going to the moon may be the perfect testing ground for future missions to the likes of Mars and ultimately to get a better understanding of our very own natural satellite and the universe beyond. Do you think we should build a moon base? Let me know in the comments below. A lot of time and research goes into these videos every week. If you enjoyed watching, why not hit that subscribe button or just watch one of the other videos. Thanks for watching.